So a couple things I tell players, especially when they're first starting out, is to think about how high of a contact point with the ball they can possibly have. A lot of times players pick a line that they're approaching and they just stick with that line, even if the set's a little inside or wide. But if I, if I tell them to really start thinking about going up and getting the ball as high in the air as they can, it really helps them start reaching and pushing to the ball a little bit more with their feet. Um, right now we're gonna cover specifically some inside sets because it happens sometimes, sometimes on purpose and it's the play. And, and sometimes on accident and hitters need to adjust. Um, and if I'm a setter and my hitter gets to any ball I set them and hits it and doesn't, you know, oh, that was inside, or I'm gonna set them a lot more and I'm gonna do it with confidence and it's gonna make me set them better. So if you're an outside hitter, there is not a bad set. If there's a trap set and it's so tight and obviously bad, do you need to say anything? No, because as a setter, I see that I trapped them. I already feel bad about it, right? Um, if you're a setter watching this, I always, as a setter, if I, if I trap set or I do something, I immediately just say, my bad, that was tight, I got the next one. So that way the hitter knows that I'm aware and they, they know they don't need to tell me, that I already saw it. I think that's important. So if the set goes inside, uh, not, not on purpose, but just it happens in a game, you won't necessarily know that by the time you take your transfer step, but you'll know it by that point. You'll see the balls inside and this second step, it's really important to cover as much ground as you can in an exact lineup to where you think that ball is gonna be at its highest peak where you can get it. So it's a little bit mathematical of picking your angles. You can't just go here if the ball's there. You have to figure out where that ball is gonna be in the air and what is my, my quickest direct line to the ball. And that second step is what takes you there. So Emily's gonna push way inside and she's gonna have to travel even more with the final two and she can get to a ball that's all the way in here and take a swing on it. Let's try one more. So she's taking her weight transfer. She sees, oh, it's inside, I push. Good. Let's try one more. Claire, push off even more. Say it's, you have to get to that line. Good, so she's hitting a hard ball all the way, all the way at that line. And a lot of teams run specific plays that are inside sets, and if you, if you can actually not totally uh, give it away by cheating way in, but you can kind of still get there from out there, a lot of times this blocker's not watching the right thing and you can completely burn them inside. So as, as much as you can hide that in the approach, if it's an on purpose inside set, um, then that, that'll be, a good tool for you guys also. I really like how Emily took a really, really big second step on that ball to get to it. Nice. So if you see that, if you see that I, I set that ball right here and they were planning on the ball being there, if you can get to a ball that's here and still hit it, you're gonna have a lot of success because a lot of times that blocker doesn't do a great job adjusting and you'll end up having holes that you wouldn't have on a perfect set when they're all lined up exactly right. So I always think the time to tip is on a perfect set when everyone's ready for you to swing because it's perfect, that's when you throw in a tip. But if it's something that's a little off, take a swing because that also means the defense is a little bit off as well and not set up perfectly.